So that was Kenny Lattimore. How about me? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> this is my unsung weekend, and yes. I get to go back to the beginning. <laughs> Yes, it's Magic 102.3 and 92.7. <laughs> Kenny Lattimore, I, I was just like, you know, you can go ahead and do your thing. Rock out. You know, since you're here, you yes, family. Yes, I'm home. Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, I round of it. applause. I, I love give you a round it. of applause. Yeah. So this Sunday. This Sunday. It goes down, unsung, 9 p.m. Yeah. And I'm excited about this because I feel like we... We haven't really gotten too much into Kenny Lattimore's business, like from yeah. Kenny, Kenny Lattimore. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. feel like there were just a lot of, a just lot of rumors, stuff people talking. speculation. Yeah, all kind of yeah. people just talking. What, what is that? <laughs> but so, uh, it's interesting because we I got into this whole idea of unsung and what unsung was. Because uh-huh. a lot of times people are like, "Is un, are you are you really unsung? I mean, you just I just had a top 10 record, you know. Right, right. It's not my career that's so much unsung, but it is the story, like you mentioned. I'm not, yeah. my life has not been, t- the story hasn't been told by me. So, um, and that's we, what I wanted to know. Like, what was your initial reaction when you knew that you were going to get this unsung episode? <laughs> was it like a relief? Like, okay, finally I can tell. Well, it was my something side. that was talked about for mm-hmm. a long time. I didn't want to do it. Um, Why? For years I didn't. I mean, we, I talked with uh, some of, the uh, staffing that mm-hmm. would, would normally offer it um, years ago. Yeah. I didn't want. I didn't think the timing was right, particularly after my uh, ex-wife had done television mm-hmm. and she did an unsung and she did a, another television show. And I was like, you know what? Let her story do whatever yeah. it's going for her because I didn't know why the story existed in the way it did. But oh, you know, okay. I just, so your name might have been mentioned, yeah, one or two times. But that was somebody else's story, right? <laughs> so I think that you would want to vindicate tell your it story. Yeah, like to tell your story though you know what i i was living it i was so in the middle of living it and living it with a young child okay yeah, so that does it was make very important to me to make sure that before i started to say anything that there was some maturity that he was ready for people to hear you know mm-hmm. the truth mm-hmm. um and there's still a lot that is not said uh that um you know and just out of love Love covers a multitude of fault. Yeah, and and it, and it covers. I, I still have that kind of love for my family, for Shantae, where I'm. I really tried to talk about, you know, things that she put out, mm-hmm. but not go into. Oh well, let me tell y'all all the truth about her, and let me tell you what. You know, it's not one of those kind of stories. It really is. You've heard this. This is what the real truth is. Because you sound like you've grown, and you've you know you've been through a lot of things. And did you ever feel like? there was a conversation to be had or was it not that type of relationship where you felt like you can sit down and really talk like, okay, so why are you saying this? Or, you know, to really hash out things privately since you were such a Mm -hmm. private person. Yeah. To be honest, I didn't know why what was happening was happening. Okay. Um, A lot of times people would come to me and they say, Oh, we're so sorry that you're going through this. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? I just, I just didn't get the script. I understand that people have to make money and we have this amazing platform as artists to do so. And I think that's what she did. She just wanted to go out and she wanted to make some money. She did it at all costs because it wasn't just me. There was a story about our son in it. It Mm. was a story that I was trying to take him from her. And then there were other stories that attached to that. And I was getting hate mail. I was about to say that that's made it seem like you were the villain. Yeah. And I'm probably explain that to your son. Um, well, because I lived and I didn't go out on a platform to try to tour and be away from him during those times, mm. I was keeping him during those times mm. uh, while she was figuring it out. Okay. So he got a chance to uh, question it, although now he's 16, just turned 16. He looks back on it and uh, I think sometimes he says, well, mom, mom should have handled that differently. She, she didn't handle that well. Okay. Or he will say, and that's a quote. Uh, or he'll just say, oh, okay, I, I believed what was said about me or, or about you. I, I, Dad, I believed all the things that were said about you. Uh-huh. And, um, and it was tough, but I'm starting to begin to have my own opinion. The most difficult thing I ever did in my life was trust my, my son's mind and heart to other adults. Ooh. That was one of the most difficult things that I ever did in my entire life, uh, to trust God with that and believe that at some point, he would be validated. I didn't need to be validated. I knew who I was. Right. But I needed everything to come full circle so that he did not become disqualified in the in the public whatever was going on mm-hmm. boxing match that was happening. 
Right. And it wasn't a boxing match because, again, I wasn't swinging back. I was about to say it was one side. It yeah. was a one sided thing. I needed to let that just die. Sometimes you just let things die. Yeah. And now that the <laughs> dust is dust is kind of settled. Yeah. Now you are telling your story with uh, Unsung and you're talking, you're taking it all the way back to when you first started. All the way back. Fresh out of D.C. Yeah. We and I'm like, come hold straight up, from the city. Hold up, Kenny Lattimore. Go, go music, chicken and mumbo sauce. Yeah, is yeah. that what <laughs> All of that. Okay, you know, while you're here, you got to go get three wings and some <laughs> yeah. mumbo sauce, right? But like coming, you know, out of D.C. and then going into the music industry and then in 97 having that big hit, yeah. you know, for yeah. you. Was that a turning point where you're like, okay, oh my gosh, like I made it and now I got to get into the politics of the music industry? Absolutely. Because I feel like once Absolutely. you get that and, big and, and hit, we really go politics. deep in. If you're Maxwell fans, tune in because it was a little battle between the, us and it wasn't mm. about he and I because I'm a definite fan of his and I believe he's a, a fan or at least respects what I do. Mm -hmm. But, um, there was some choosing of who was going to be the man to represent Columbia Records at that time. And he definitely won that battle. And mm. we talk about what it felt like for me, you know, during those time periods, because a lot of people will be like, well, this person was better. No, that one was better. And but we were two black men who had the opportunity who to who, who could sing and were completely different. Right. Um, but it was almost like at that time the record company was like, no, we're going to choose one of you. It's going to be one black guy that represents uh, the record company at the time. That's what it felt like. I'm not saying literally that they did it, but when you watch the unsung, you might agree with me that they did make a decision. Yeah. And um, there's some really wonderful things that are said about me, but in terms of why they made the decision that they made, it wasn't about record sales and all that. You're talking mm -hmm. about the politics of the industry. Yeah. It wasn't supposedly, well, I don't want to tell you, I don't want to give too much no, away, but they're going to tell you what away. they think the reason was. But for me, I just felt like if I were Bob Dylan and I was at the same label with Bruce Springsteen, we both would have existed and we would have both had promotion and everything behind us mm. and it would have been no problem. But uh, there's so many di different layers to the story, but right. the best thing that I can say is that I learned how to survive it all. I learned how to survive it all. And, and uh, even the rumors and everything, there was a time when I come from a very um, strong Christian background, mm -hmm. uh, a biblical background. Let me say that because Christian nowadays is something different, I think, oh. to some people. But okay. anyway, that's another conversation. <laughs> right. But as a, I believe in the Bible, I believe in, in, the, in the principles that are there. And the one thing that I looked at was Jesus' example that there were people, there were rumors about him. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, and so he asked at one time, who do, who men say I am? Who, what? And they said, well, some of them think you're the devil himself. Some of them think that you're a prophet. Some of them think you're this and that and the other. But he had to go to the circle of people that were closest to him and say, but who do you say I am? And right. I realized that for me, that meant I always had to figure out who loved me for real and to keep my relationships close with those that loved me. And I know, I know nothing could possibly prepare you for everything that you went through. But were there yeah. any moments where you felt like, I just want to quit? You know what? I'm oh, about sure. to become a firefighter. Absolutely. Like, I, can't do, I can't do this. Definitely. And so um, what kept you strong in those moments? It comes back to the people that I was surrounded with. There's right. a guy named Carvin Hagens. I, I, because people don't really know, but I, I did stop for a while. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was. Somewhere around 2010 through 2014, before my Anatomy of a Love song came out and Love Me Back and those songs came. Mm -hmm. It took four years to compile together songs to make an album. And people thought, wow, this is one of your best albums. But it took a long time and the pain of watching everything happen. Mm -hmm. But I was spending that time with my son and I was trying to figure it out. What else could I do? Because yeah. it, it was feeling like I'm, I'm not in love with the industry part anymore. I, I still Ooh. love the music, but I'm not in love with the industry part and uh, how do I find myself again? And, and, and God gave me something and he put this, this in my spirit. Your, your legacy, Kenny, has always been to sing to the hearts of women and to the minds of men to encourage them in love. And if you can just get back to purpose, purpose is going to be higher than industry mm -hmm. because whether you have a platform to sing to a million or to 20 people, you still going with that purpose. You're going to be OK. 
And then with going through all of these stories and kind of reliving oh, that was it hard. all over again. It was yeah. Hard. So oh, how yeah. so those emotions that came up, was there anything you felt was unresolved and it may have put you in a position to, you know, let me reach out to this person or let me get this off my chest. Did they do that for you? You know what it helped me resolve? It's a great question. Wow. I felt like the people that had to speak and be a part of the unsung was a way of um, not reconciling like we had beef or something like that, Mm -hmm. but it was something about bringing all of the people who actually made that history with me back together that was so powerful and that they, we were all sitting in rooms and for me to just love on them and embrace them and be like, you were there, you know, the truth. Yeah. These were the people who lived day by day with me and made the music with me. I thought that was the most powerful thing. I didn't have any other than I try to keep my life clean just in general. And I yeah. treat people well. I love people. Best type and, of um, karma. Yeah. To get back. Yeah. So, so in know, terms of giving, be okay. always be OK. Yep. I, I can go back to women I dated, you know, 20 years ago and be like, hey, I need to crash on your sofa and they could be married and I could probably still do Come that. On. You know, because I've treated because I, right. I truly loved them. If, I, if I've ever loved you, it doesn't go away just because what I'm at, I'm mad at you today or whatever. Yeah. Again, yeah. love covers a multitude of fault. Love is enduring. So um, I didn't have any of those kind of relationships as much as it was just beautiful bringing those people together that were witnesses and those that gave me the opportunity. Yeah. And everybody came to this. I, I was shocked. I had like whew, 20, 16 to 20 interviews. And I was like, how are y'all going to fit in this one episode? I don't know. I love that, though. That says that speaks a lot to your character. Thank and then you. in Thank going you. through this whole thing, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned in your career mm-hmm. and then in love? The biggest lesson that I learned in my career was to keep going. You know, I heard uh, Nipsey Hussle saying that actually uh, recently when they were Mm -hmm. giving quotes Mm -hmm. that never giving up. That is never fold. Uh, And you you never know when the opportunity, when the tide is going to change or the season is going to change. It's about being ready and being prepared. And to tell you the truth, love is the same way. <laughs> you never Actually, know when I was it's going to change. You know what? As you're as you're saying that, I'm like, you can put both of those. You can put together. both of them together, and uh, it's one of those things, though, that um, love endures all. And I, I just, I just want to be authentic mm-hmm. in how I love, and I want to love in a godly way that surpasses everything else. And I think because I loved differently than who I was with. And that's a different story because, um, and I think she's been able to explain her, her position. Mm -hmm. We were very different. I felt like uh, we were committed to different commitments at times. You know, we, we really were committed to different commitments where this is what, what I'm telling you is what I come from. Sometimes people have heard what I just said and they're like, Oh yeah, I come from that too, but they didn't live it. I don't think that she lived it. And I'm not taking a dig at her. I mean, just as people, we're flawed as human beings. Mm. And I'm not perfect. And there are other things that go along with that. There are other past history issues that were in our marriage and mm-hmm. in our life that I don't think I handled well. I didn't. Right. And I don't have any regrets either. I know why I handled things the way I did. But if I had known, oh, wow, this is really what your past is and this is how you... I did know some of the past, and I thought when when she got her show, not to go off on a tangent uh, about Shantae either, but when she got her show, Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, this is going to be beautiful for her because I know the real story. And if she had told her real story, I think women would have been empowered all over the world and that she would have been respected Mm -hmm. as a speaker. She would have had so many platforms that would have opened up for her. Um, But I think that sometimes we get caught in sensationalism Mm -hmm. or maybe the network because we're in reality TV or whatever, the network start to sway you. I mean, there always has to to do some other, the sensational story. Yeah. But Uh, I thought she had a sensational story. It didn't have to be made up about me and our son. You know, that was her truth. That was her story. But it wasn't, it wasn't the truth. It was just a story for TV. So I I, I wish she had told the truth. If she had told the truth, it would have been powerful. But again, okay, we're going to move away from that. Yeah. Okay. What I gave the world uh, in this unsung is just the truth. And it wasn't easy. I thought it was going to be easier mm-hmm. than it was. But when I sat there and they started interviewing me and saying, well, what did you think about this? And, and they started pulling up research. And yeah. I was like, well, how, how did you how know about know that? that? 
I was like, oh man. And, and it, um, some things brought me to tears. It was, it was like, oh, wow. you know, you have to go, okay, let me take a minute and let me so step back. So it really back. takes it there. It takes Just, it all the way there. And I was interviewed for about two days for sure, because it was wow. a lot to the story. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm so looking forward to it. And I know you can't give away. Oh, yeah. Too much. <laughs> you can't give away too much. But you have to tell us about the music that I'm sure you're working on. I'm working on some music. Uh, but I the big, so. the biggest thing that we have is along with the uh, unsung, there's a contest where you can win me oh, to okay. sing for your proposal or your anniversary or your wedding. You know what? And it's I'm like, if Kenny Lattimore <laughs> can't do nothing else, he can sing. At a oh. wedding, <laughs> if, if, if all else fails, you don't, you, have put to that be a, on the map. you don't have to be a firefighter. You don't have to do anything else, Kenny. You just That's do true. That's, I don't have to think about another career. If I just did weddings, huh? <laughs> you just did I weddings, appreciate that. I do good. appreciate that. Well, I, this is anybody's <laughs> opportunity. It can happen to you. So what website? If you enter, you can go to my social media, or I believe it's TV1 slash love. Uh, okay. And there is uh, tv1.com slash love. But if if you forget it or whatever, go to at Kenny Lattimore, like my Instagram, yes. or go to Facebook, official Kenny Lattimore. And there's just a link right there you can click on. Tell us your unsung love story. Ooh. Because we're talking about things that have not been told. You have an unsung love story that the world might be encouraged uh, by. So this is an, a way for me to extend uh, my beliefs and, I, and what I believe my purpose is to the rest of the world. I love it. And Thanks. you know what? And I read energy. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. I'm sure you're going to leave us with something that we can take with us as well. I hope so. so. Yeah, I hope so. I hope people, I hope people relate to it. And even if they don't, like some people, I saw some uh, early social media. Some people were like, no, we don't want to know that about you. We don't want to know, oh, you know, um, because people get, uh, they get have caught an up in their an idea of what you are. Yeah. I think a lot of people make that mistake, though. They have an idea of what a celeb is or what their life is about or what they read. And then when you tell your truth, they're like, yeah. oh, no, they don't want to believe or it. Like, the, or if you're mentioning something for the first time, because they're you? hearing it for the first time, they think that it's current. Oh, right. Okay. And that maybe you're healing yeah. from, yeah. oh, my gosh, are you healing from that? Or are you? And I'm, I'm <laughs> the story is about my entire life. So it starts a long time ago, folks. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then it goes disclaimer. through. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer that. Yeah. That I'm, I'm not healing from the past. I am healed from the past. Say um, that. I needed to do the unsung when I was healed. I did not want to do an unsung about my life story while I was in pain about and anything else. Exactly. No, didn't want to give that to anybody. Yes, absolutely. Then I you tell the wrong right. story. You tell the wrong part of the story. Then you be mad. You yeah. <laughs> and another thing. Right, exactly. Make sure this is in there, too. <laughs> Thank absolutely. you so much, Kitty Lattimore. You Thank make you. sure, DMV, that you are tuned in this Sunday at 9 p.m. only on TV One yeah. Unsung. And if you're around tomorrow, I'm, I'm singing for Emancipation Proclamation Day at Freedom oh, yeah, Plaza. And it's free, Plaza now. totally free. So y'all come out and hang with us for Emancipation Proclamation Day with the mayor. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. And I can't wait to see it this Sunday. Appreciate you. It's Magic 102.3 and 92.7.